I'm sure you've heard of the mud skipper, but how do these fish actually survive out of the water? And are they the next step in fish evolution? And will all fish in the future learn how to walk on land in a few thousand of years' time? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. <laughs> The mud skipper is a favourite case study animal of our Singaporean primary schools when teaching about how bizarre the animal world is. Because aren't fish supposed to only live in the water? Well, I'm here today in Singapore's mangroves to observe these often overlooked fishies that are found all over the mud flats. Now in Singapore, at least eight species of mud skippers have been observed in our shores and mangroves, including the locally threatened giant mud skipper. And although they are great at camouflage, they are not hard for us to spot, especially because their own eyes are protruding on the top of their heads. Now along with having great vision, this gives them a wonderful panoramic view to spot predators and prey with. Yes, some mudskippers are predators themselves. Although some species are detritivorous, meaning they eat dead or decaying matter, many of them are actually predatory and they will hunt for insects, worms and small crabs. And all of these prey, as you might have guessed, live in the mud outside of the water, which explains why mud skippers spend about three quarters of their life outside of the water. So to the main question, how are they doing this land breathing that most other fish are not able to? Well, their bodies have actually adapted two ways for doing so. And the first adaptation lies in those big, puffy cheeks. What you're actually seeing is the mud skipper's enlarged gill chambers. And within these chambers, the mud skipper actually carries around tanks of water inside of them. Think of it as reverse air tanks, which also needs to be replenished after a certain period of time. And that's why these mud skippers make intertidal spaces their homes, because there will always be bodies of water around, no matter how far out into the mud flat they crawl or skip out to. But the second, less obvious adaptation is their skin. Just like amphibians, mudskippers also breathe using the process of cutaneous respiration. And that just simply means that they absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide using their skin as the main organ. This happens because their skin is permeable to gases and is also packed with a lot of blood vessels to allow for the exchange of these gases. However, the oxygen needs to be dissolved in a layer of water for this to happen. So, their skin must remain moist. But the weird thing is, although both of these tricks still rely on water, it is reported that mud skippers can still drown if they are forced underwater for too long. And that's probably because their bodies are adapted to surviving using these two methods. So anything outside of it is just not something that they can handle. So this begs the question, We've seen in textbooks on how a key moment in evolution was when the first prehistoric animals started to crawl up from the oceans which kick-started the evolutionary lineage we learn today. So is the mudskipper just a timestamp of evolution happening? Well, first things first, the mudskippers are by no means our prehistoric ancestors because scientifically speaking, a currently living species can never be the ancestor of another living species. So you better don't anyhow go around saying people great 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 grandmother is a mud skipper. Ah. However, mud skippers do still retain their form as a fish, but have developed all of these macro modifications of these same fish parts to enable them a life outside of the water. So yes, we are actually observing macro evolution right in front of our eyes. And although, yeah, evolution takes millions of years, but these moist and overlooked mudskippers are indeed an intermediate form of a creature that we can only imagine and that only our great 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 grandchildren can observe and appreciate. So for now, let us appreciate this timestamp of our generation. And that is all we have for today's episode. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram and Facebook and all those fancy stuff and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle or a mangrove out there. Okay, bye.